Hello everyone, I'm Dan Groninger for GE Inspection Technologies and welcome to our the first in our series of instructional videos on the Mentor EM, the Eddy Current version of the Mentor. In this video we're going to cover basic assembly of the instrument, uh, the things that may be in the box or may be attached to your instrument, how to connect the charger, get things uh, started, and begin to do some simple inspections with the instrument. So, in the box, you should find your Mentor EM, the charger, uh, that your Mentor EM may come with the protective nylon case already applied to it, uh, but we'll talk about how to put that on, and it will most likely come with one or more adapter modules. The base instrument is a very flexible instrument platform. Um, but as you can see, there's docking connectors at the top. And the instrument is actually oriented like that when sitting on the desk. The connector at the top is where we attach things related to the eddy current probes. The connector at the bottom is dedicated to peripherals for the onboard computer. So we have a whole series of adapter modules uh, to go with the instrument. Modules such as this one. This is a two input ad probe adapter module for eddy current, labeled one and two for the two inputs. This is a single input version of the instrument. So, depending what options you purchased with your instrument, you may have a single, you may have a dual, and this is a slightly different version of the dual module with one 12 pin connector for general purpose. Uh, surface type probes or rotary probes and one six pin connector that is specially dedicated to conductivity measurement. And we'll have specific videos later on on conductivity, on rotary inspection, on more complex surface inspections and some tubing applications as well. But there have been a number of generations of uh, Mentor probe adapters. If you happen to have a Mentor probe adapter with a smoothly curved case. In this case, it's a three, con a three connector, one for conductivity, two for general purpose probes. And you'll note uh, this is actually a five pin conductivity connector, which is not used with Mentor probes, but is only used with older uh, Phasec type probes. We'll get into that later in conductivity. But these modules with the smooth top only mount those on the instrument in this orientation with the connectors, with the probe connectors facing towards the center of the instrument. The more modern housings that have an aluminum base plate and a rubberized uh, exterior, uh, more complex, have the GE logo here in the middle. So you can see this has a, a uh, rubberized base plate where this has anodized aluminum. This one has just generally more finished appearance. These are uh, more recently manufactured. These modules can actually be plugged on at your convenience either with the connectors facing the middle or they can be rotated 180 degrees and attached such that probe connectors come out the top for easier access. And we are going to attach ours in that orientation. You just line up the docking connector and run the screws in. All right, and just like we had here, we have a number of optional modules for uh, computer uh, connectivity, peripheral connectivity. The module most commonly encountered has uh, USB and two 7 pin LIMO inputs for encoders. Uh, the XY input are encoder inputs only. The Z has encoder inputs for a third axis as well as alarm output pins and a remote on-off pin. So you can do some simple system integration with the Mentor making use of that Z connector. You also have a USB connector here that we'll use to get apps and data on and off of the instrument. These modules have keying tabs 
on the side, they only go onto the instrument in one direction. So you line up the keys with the, the ribs in the back of the case, line up the connector, put that on, and dog dad the screws. Okay. One important thing to note is the kickstand, which can be used to hold the instrument at different angles you know, to make for nice viewing. Do not just grab this and yank. These are not spring-loaded. Uh, they are not made for friction fit. They engage positively. You must push in on the buttons. Uh, there's two orange buttons, one on each side. You must push in on those buttons and then the, the kickstand will move very easily. If you force it, you can break these hubs. Next, we'll connect our battery charger. And the battery charger is universal input. You should be able to plug that into pretty much any standard power grid in the world. Uh, it's 85 to 240, I believe, 250 volt input, 50 or 60 hertz. Uh, we ship the Mentor with, I believe, three adapter cables, uh, mainland Europe, uh, UK, and US. That covers most uh, readily available power connectors. If yours, uh, if your country where you're operating does not uh, use one of those standards, the charger has an IEC connector, a very standardized probe. You should be able to source a power cord locally that will fit your instrument very well. All right, so the, the output of the charger is into the power jack here. <clears throat> it's easiest to turn the, char the instrument on end and just take your finger and give a little spin to the locking collar and that will engage with the connector on the instrument and uh, keep the, the power of the charger engaged properly. Um, you can do it with your fingers by gripping the ring but it's just a little more awkward to do that. I always set my instrument on end, just give it a quick spin, it locks. Power switch is right here so that you can very conveniently reach over the top of the instrument, push the power switch. Right. Your instrument may come with the, the protective case already on. If not, it's very easy to add that. Put the case on the desk in front of you. There's a little opening in one edge in here that lines up with the LED on top. <coughs> Lay the case on the desktop. It's easy enough to grab the corners, pull that up, screws through, like so, bring the cord, like so. If you have an external battery pack, uh, you can easily attach the battery pack to one or the other of these, whichever is more convenient for you to work with. And in that case, the battery pack would plug in the same place as the charger and the charger can then plug into the battery pack. So it is possible to charge both the external pack and the internal Mentor battery at the same time. So there you see we have the hole lined up with the, the LED. See the screen, we have a nice protective layer here that we can fold <coughs> up and tuck under the instrument. Okay, at this point we can go ahead and turn the instrument on. And while that's booting, I'm going to come around here and I happen to have a differential probe. The probes plug in up top. Generally, if you have an app that only uses uh, one of the inputs, it's going to be on input one. Uh, an exception to that is conductivity, which uses input two. Uh, however, that will all be handled for you with the conductivity app. Uh, if you have a dual input uh, with the probe adapter facing this direction, facing upward, one will be on the left, two will be on the right. Input one, input two. So we're going to plug into input one. And if the adapter spun around, it's still one and two, but now one is going to be on this side and two over here. Okay. 
Now, in basic operation, it's uh, completely a touchscreen device. Uh, the only hard control on the instrument is the power switch that we had around back there. All right, and when we get into uh, complete instrument operation, we will defer that until the next video uh, when I will have a uh, camera on one side, screen view on the other, and you'll be able to see a lot easier what's going on on the instrument. Uh, we have a, I have a large collection of apps on this particular instrument. Uh, this is one that I use for app development, uh, an app that will be on your instrument as part of the, the deployment or part of the release of the software is an app called Phasic Mode. And this has a number of panels dedicated to just general purpose testing. So the very first one has only a Lissajou on it. I hit balance in the center. My probe's connected, and it's going to be a little tough to see what's going on on the instrument uh, like this. So with that, we'll conclude this uh, this first video. You know, we covered how to unbox the instrument, connect the charger, attach uh, adapter modules, start the instrument by pressing the power button. Uh, anytime you start the instrument with the power button, just give it a press for about half a second to a second. If you hold the power button down too long, you might get into a forced shutdown mode. And just like most PCs this day, these days, if you run into computer issues on the instrument, it's on and doesn't want to turn off. Press and hold the power switch for about eight seconds, and that will force a shutdown of the computer. Um, if you just want to turn it off normally, exit from your app, give a quick tap on the power button, a window will pop up saying, hey, do you really want to shut down? Yes, shut down. And in several more seconds, the instrument turns off. All right, that concludes this first video in the series. Uh, thank you for joining me. Again, I'm Dan Groninger with GE Inspection Technologies.